Okay guys, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up where we left off. Um, so hopefully you noticed the amendment uh, from the last video um, where we just forgot to change this from elements to selection. Um, yeah, if you tested it when it was still in elements, you'll notice it wouldn't work. So um, it does need to be in selection. Okay, so we're just going to yeah pick up where we left off from down here. Uh, so what we've got is um, you'll have the, the one question, it'll tell you whether it's right or wrong, tell you the score, and then just stop. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need it to move on to the next question. So we have a variable for the question number um, up here, question num. So that needs to be a sort of added to. So at the moment it's, it starts at one, um, so we just need to sort of add one on to that variable so it moves on to the next question. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the variables, big variables, um, set, and it is question number, plug that in there, and we're setting it to plus one, so I'm going to run that, uh, plus, okay, and we are adding one, so Set a value, make that one. And we're adding one to um, whatever the current uh, question number is. So that's going to be get and question number. So set and get are things that you'll see quite a lot um, in programming generally. So we're going to set the question number to plus one of whatever the current question number is. So even if the question number isn't one, like it's two or three or four, um, it's still adding to whatever that current number is. All right, so that will move the question on, but now we need to change the, uh, the display of the question. So it's actually displaying the right question um, in the labels. So um, <clears throat> the first one we want to set is the question label. And remember, we're setting the text, so we can use that. Um, we need a join. I'm just going to copy this join, save me some time, plug that into there. Um, and this is going to be, actually, no, not a join, sorry. We want to select it from a list. Yeah, that should work. So it's going to set the question number text um, to, um, what's it going to be, the questions, of course. The global questions. So it's going to look in the list of global questions. Um, and it's going to get the question number. The index is going to be the question number. So it will look for the question number, um, go to the global questions, um, and display whichever question is corresponding with the current question number. All right, so that will show the right question at the top of the screen. Um, next, we need to make sure it's showing the right uh, choices that correspond with the question. So we've got three different ones here, um, so they need to match up. So that's going to be our question list. And again, we're going to set the elements. Okay, this time it is definitely elements and not selection, so that's fine. Um, and again, we're going to get it from the list, same as before, um, except this list isn't the questions list, it's the choices list. And it's still related to the question number that we're on. Okay, so I'll display the right question and the correct uh, choices that match it. Fine, so that's fine. So what happens then when we get to the end of the questions? We need it to display like the final score. So um, we're going to need a, an if statement in here. So if we get to the end, so how are we going to do that? Uh, we need logic to say if something's equal to, um, and it's what is what needs to be equal to. It's the question uh, number. So um, get the question number. There we are. It needs to be equal to. We just need a value. And this is going to be the number of questions that you have in total. So this could be different to, for you from what I've got here. So 
Um, at the moment, I have, well, really, I have three questions, but actually, there are four questions here. So the fourth question is just this blank question. Okay, and this is where we're going to see why this is useful here. So because I've got four, the fourth question is my blank one, I'm going to put number four there. Okay, if you've got um, you know, 10 questions, um, you might have your 11th one being the blank one, in which case you'd put 11 here. Okay, so when it gets to that blank question, um, it will display the final score. And the reason why I've got a blank one is because we want it to display the final score, but we don't want the questions still showing at that point. We want those the questions to be just blank. Um, so in order to make that also work, what we're going to need to do, we've got a blank question. We need blank choices as well and blank answers to match it. So just add in here uh, another item. Let's copy that list. And again, just make all these blank. Let's delete those. Same here. Add that in and delete that. So when this question shows, it will just be blank, blank, blank. OK. Um, so now we need to set it to actually display that final score. So that's the score label. So we can just copy this bit here, set in the score label text. Uh, keep the join and this instead of just saying the score we want it to say final score or something like that and it's still going to get that whatever the current global score is okay so that will end like the round I suppose show you the final score um, at that point then you want them to be able to move on to the next round so um, remember up here we showed the that's the level 2 button so let's make it clearer. Let's go to the level two button. Set the visibility. Set visibility. There we go. Um, yeah, keep it in there. Uh, and then we want that to be true. Because remember, up here it would set to false. So copy one of those trues. Bring them to there. Okay, so that will then set that button to visible, so you'll be able to then see the button to move on to the next level. Um, and what we then need to do is tell that button to actually move to the next level. So that's the last thing we need to do. So um, let's click our button, and we need a control. So when you click the button, so over here, um, it needs to uh, open another screen, which is open another screen okay and then we just need a value uh, text whatever your screen name is um, we haven't actually made a third screen yet but I assume it's going to be called screen 3 so I'll put screen 3 you might want to name your screens a bit better um, than me okay so I think that is it now uh, let me just zoom out so you can see everything in one there we are. Okay, so what we've just added in this session is um, this here, which is going to move the question on to the next uh, question by adding to the uh, global question number. Um, these two, which are going to change the display, so it's going to change the um, question text to the next question and the choices that are available to the next number of choices. Um, when it gets to this uh, blank one that we've set up, um, the questions and that will all be blank and it will just show us our final score okay and it will show us the button that we made to move on to the next level when you click that button it will move to the next screen all right so yeah that was quite tricky <laughs> hopefully um, by doing that you've learned a lot about how the system works um, and a bit about programming in general as well um, what we're going to do in the next uh, videos is just be adding in features um, which you will have to sort of incorporate into your app um, yourselves, uh, which will make more sense, I suppose, in the next video. Okay, so just make sure you test this, make sure it's all working uh, before you move on.